with solo music. I had tried to write new material throughout the years, and in some cases I'd finish maybe one song or two songs, but then they'd get shelved usually the next day. I felt like everything I was doing was so forced. Ultimately, it would end up taking some really bad things in my life to give me the inspiration to make music again. And for once, I wasn't voluntarily trying to adhere to a style. It was just working. The aesthetic of this record is dark. I mean, really dark. Probably the darkest music I've ever worked on either for me or anybody else. It became really easy over time to liken a lot of what I was doing to movies that I was into. And throughout the process, it's been a pretty integral part. Although, I wouldn't necessarily call the record a concept album where each song is based on a film. Well, maybe some of it. In the time that I've been making records, you know, either for me or for other people, I have never felt as emotionally connected to my output as I do now. So, right now, um, there's actually a mild to moderate chance of there being a real drummer on the record. Um, but either way, there's nothing temporary about the programming. It's basically being done pretty much exactly how I would have played it on the drum kit myself. <laughs> Even though it's demo and writing time for the record, um, the, the drum programming, there's no demo phase for that. I mean, that's being done as final drums from the beginning. Mostly because that's just as much a part of the song as anything else, and I want to commit to those parts. And also because it's a tremendous weight off my shoulders to not be fiddling with drum parts during tracking. Demoing guitars for the record has been pretty closely planned out. Um, you know, there needs to be a rhythm track, and the parts in the rhythm track are, are committed. Um, the only difference is it's going to be re-recorded. And the melodies, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, those might change a slight bit, but really what I'm doing is committing to the parts now so that I remember them later and I can retract them and not have to struggle with that. There's also, um, you know, other auxiliary parts that are going to be put in too, but it's, it's not really something right now that I'm worried about. This part of the process has also been really beneficial for me, you know, for trying out things like different picks for different parts or different sitting postures to see which is the most comfortable for tracking. But one of the coolest things that's happened so far is that I've been messing around with a lot of different guitar signal paths, specifically digital ones, and the options are really the best that they've ever been. Keyboards on this record are taking much more of a textural and atmospheric kind of role. Um, last time I did this, you know, they were much more prominent and there was a lot more lead playing and things like that, and that's cool, but ultimately, um, for this record, you know, the goal has been dimension and to make the sort of the soundscape a lot more expansive. Um, and so that's, you know, that's really what I'm going to try to adhere to. Although, you know, when there's anything really prominent, it's going to be very rhythmic. Mm -hmm. 